Hello, and what a fun Theology Thursday we're going to have today. We're going to talk about your body, <laughs> your physical body. And I want to talk about the concept of health and a physical body and a little bit of theology in here along the way as well. So probably the most pertinent verse to this concept of health and a physical body is found in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, where the Apostle Paul, writing to young Timothy, says, For while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way, as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. Now what does the Apostle Paul mean by that? Is he saying, hey, well, don't worry about doing any kind of take care of your body sort of thing? No. What the Apostle Paul is pointing out is that taking care of yourself physically is good for this life, but has no impact and has nothing to do with the life to come. Also, taking care of yourself physically only applies to some areas of your life. There are other areas of your life where being healthy really doesn't have any kind of impact at all. But walking with Jesus Christ impacts every single area of life, all of them. And walking with Him should impact us physically. So I want to talk for a few minutes about where being healthy fits in the whole Christian life uh, for just, uh, just a little bit. <clears throat> I want to, to do this along three different kind of concepts. Now, the first concept is theological because that's most important. And the theological reality is you and I inhabit a physical body. God made Adam. He breathed into his nostrils. Not he got a soul, but he became a living soul, a living being. And so you and I have a spiritual part of us, but we also have a physical part. And we're not a, a, a good spirit trapped inside an evil body or something like that. We are very physical. We relate to the world physically. We live in a physical world. You and I have a body. And the reality is when we die and this body decomposes, when Jesus returns, we'll be given a new body. We will actually have a physical body in heaven forever. So having a body is a part of God's plan and intention for you and me from the very beginning. So, you know, theologically, the body is a part of who God made us. He didn't make a spirit and stick it inside a body. You and I are a complete human being that includes both the parts we don't see and the parts that we can see, of the body. So the body is good. It's not naturally evil with a, a you know, a, some kind of good spirit inside of it. The second thing that I want to talk about is how do we take care of ourselves? What does it really mean to be healthy? And what are some things that we can do to be healthy? And a little bit about that. And then the last thing I want to talk about is what the Apostle Paul says. And that's a little bit of contrast that we have here and talk about kind of some perspective. So the body is good. You and I were created with a body. Because the body is good and created by God, we should take care of it. So let's just talk about what it means to take care of your body. When we think about taking care of ourselves physically, here's where a lot of people go to. I have to eat this stuff. I got to eat a lot of vegetables. Uh, I need to eat like this, you know, salmon and stuff like that. And so this is what it means to be healthy is to eat this sort of stuff. Lots of fruits and vegetables and fishes and things. And so um, I have, you know, just some different pictures here just kind of let us know. And, and our idea is, man, to be healthy means you got to eat a certain way, like all the time. And you got to always be reading about the latest thing. And, and people have a tendency to gravitate towards one health guru or another. And everybody's got their plan to make it happen. And they think the plan's the only one and, and all kinds of, uh, of stuff. And, and some people see a conspiracy by uh, the food industry and all kinds of things like that. And so they get really, and that's kind of, and it dominates their entire life. Other people think, no, this is how God wants us to eat. It's supposed to be enjoyable. Well, it tastes good. Nothing like soft drinks and 
fries and burgers and dessert and donuts and, um, you know, man, this is what life should be like. Some people are telling you avoid all these things and other people embrace all these things. Uh, you know, this for some people is the favorite aisle in the grocery store. Uh, I mean, this is the this is the sugar aisle if there ever was one. And and then some people, this may be my favorites. They think, well, I can eat healthy most of the time, and then every once in a while, I can have my cheat day, my thirty thousand calorie cheat day. Um, and so I I really like that picture. Yeah. Uh, man, I can load up. So, what does it mean then to eat healthy? Well, I think there are a couple of extremes. On one extreme are people whose life is totally consumed and dominated by healthy eating. Or e healthy eating and exercise. That's all they think about. And I'm going to talk some more about that in our third uh, area today. But it is just constant. They're reading all the nutrition magazines and all that kind of stuff. And many of these people become judgmental of other folks. Then there's the other extreme. Hey, you only live once. I'm going to enjoy it. And man, I love burgers. I love pizza. I love donuts, you know, that sort of thing. So I'm going to eat them. I'm going to eat them. And the doctors will give me medication for diabetes and high blood pressure and heart medicine, all the other things that come as a result of that sort of diet. So I'll be fine. I'll just, you know, take the medication for it. Those, those are kind of two extremes. Probably it's somewhere in the middle. We ought to try to eat somewhat healthy. Uh, you know, I do find it interesting that God has made food good for the eyes. I mean, they're, you know, why do we have reds and yellows and golds and greens and all these colors? Why does food have to be so colorful? Why couldn't God just made all the food, the food gray? Or all the food that's good for you, gray, and all the food that's not good for you, orange or whatever he wanted. Like, he didn't do that. He had all these beautiful colors, and food is attractive to it. It looks good. Um, some of the healthy food goods look, some of the unhealthy look, food looks good. Uh, chocolate glazed donut, let's face it, looks pretty good. Uh, very attractive to the eye, but so does an apple and an orange and a pear and, you know, grapes and kind of arrange them uh, out in a bowl. I mean, they look good. So... I think somewhere in between. Uh, I don't think we want to have a 30,000 calorie a day. <clears throat> but when we think about our bodies and we think about health and eating and you know exercise and stuff, but there's more to it than that. We actually believe our bodies are important. We want our bodies to look good. That's why some people diet, because they want to lose weight, because they want to look better and feel better. Um, and so... You know, a lot of people will diet in the spring to try to look good in their, in their bathing suit or whatever. But beyond that, think about all the money that's spent by people to look better, just to improve the appearance of their body. I'm going to give you some obvious, and then maybe talk about a couple we don't think about. So, beauty aids. It's a multi-billion dollar industry. Shampoos. It's amazing. Uh, someone counted 119 shampoos, different shampoos on one uh, shelf. And then on top of that, you get all these other creams and lotions and, and remove the bags under your eyes and all this different stuff to, to improve your appearance. Uh, and and I, one count, one person said they counted 145 different beauty items on on one aisle. I mean, just think about how much space is taken up in stores just on items that people purchase in order to make themselves look better. Uh, you know, the, the, the beauty section. And it's interesting, most stores call it the health and beauty section because both of them kind of pertain to our physical body. And then some people get in a situation like mine and they want to go buy hair and so they spend money on hair to improve their looks. Uh, some people get stuff nipped and tucked and enhanced and all kinds of, I mean, they spend, you know, the, the beauty industry is a multi-billion dollar annual industry because people take their body important. And the Apostle Paul didn't say don't take an important. Apostle Paul said it is important. 
Um, but, you know, it's not the ultimate importance. But I want to show you how important people think their body is. This was the, the best statistic that I could find was this chart right here. And so if you look at this chart, this is what the average, the average American will spend in their lifetime. They spend almost $112,000 on health and fitness. Now that doesn't count the beauty products, just health and fitness, gym memberships, paying for diets, all kinds of stuff like that. It's amazing how much the average American will spend over $100,000 in their lifetime on fitness-related items. So we recognize the importance of the body and taking care of our body. But that leads to the third thing I want to talk about, and that's what the Apostle Paul said to young Timothy in uh, 1 Timothy 4.8, and that is it does have some good, but it's not the ultimate good. You see, if this life is all you have, then you want this life to be the best that it can be for you. Your whole focus is on this life. Your whole focus is on how long can I make this life last. So many people are into health and fitness not to exhibit a commitment to God or to try to take care of the body that God has given them, but because they know that when this body's done, they're done. That's all they have to live for. But the Apostle Paul says, no, 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 we have something greater. And that is our spiritual life, that we will live forever with God. So the, the point that I want to make is I think keeping yourself healthy is important. A hike, a mountain bike. My wife and I do ballroom dancing. I've done martial arts for years. Uh, we try to eat semi-healthy, even though I do love my whipped cream uh, and sweets and things. And I do occasionally have a burger and fries kind of deal. <clears throat> but... But the reality is, the ultimate goal in my life is not to preserve my body. The ultimate goal in my life is to deepen my relationship with God. Taking care of my body is a part of my relationship with God because He's given me this body. But I recognize the ultimate goal in my life is not my physical health. My ultimate goal in life is my spiritual health. The thing that's going to last forever is my relationship with God. That in Christ, both my body and my soul shall live forever with Him in heaven. And so bodily training, bodily health has some good. There are some positive aspects to it. But the reality is the ultimate good in our life is our relationship with God. And so we want to keep our physical health in its proper place. It's not the highest goal of your life to extend this life by eating and exercising. Your highest goal in this life is to glorify God by enjoying your relationship with Him. And taking care of your physical body is a part of that. So I want to encourage you to eat a little healthier. I want to encourage you to get some exercise. But I want to discourage you from allowing your life to be consumed with your physical health and thinking that is like your highest goal and your ultimate drive. Your highest goal and your ultimate drive is your relationship with God that your life will be lived in such a way that God is glorified to focus on the eternal things, not the temporal things. So, eat a little healthier, but enjoy a donut sometimes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> get some exercise, but don't allow it to consume you. The thing that should consume you, above all else, is your relationship with God through Son, Jesus Christ. So remember, bodily training has some good but it only relates to part of your life. But godliness pertains to all of life, every aspect of life. And that should be our ultimate and highest goal and pursuit. So God bless you. Have a good day, a good week, a good week of eating and a good week of exercise, but most importantly, a good week of walking with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God bless you.